So what we need exactly here is we need a public instance where we can actually connect to the internet gateway and to the internet and access our S3 buckets. So this would be one way to do it. But the other one that we wanted to do was the V2 instance that you see here, which is basically our private instance. It should be able to access the S3 bucket using the VPC endpoint. That is our main goal. So let's have one public instance and one private instance and we will see the differences between them as to how we can connect to the S3 buckets. So let's go back to the console and just see that. So this is my EC2 console and I have a public instance already created and a private instance. I have already created that. So I'll connect to my public instance and I'll show you how we can connect to the AWS S3. So go to the terminal and I'll quickly connect to the instance. So this is my public instance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type AWS S3 LS. So AWS S3 LS is basically a listing of all the buckets that you have. So by default, it just lists all the S3 buckets. Okay. So if you face this issue, it means that you don't have enough permissions to access the S3. So what do we need to do? We need to add a role and a policy to this EC2 instance that I have. So to do that, what you need to do is you need to go back to the instance. So this is the instance that I have and go to security and modify IAM role. Here, if you can choose one from the dropdown. So if you have a full S3 access, policy already existing or the role already existing then you can assign that if not then you have to create a new one so i'm going to show this show you how to create one so here once you click on create new iam role you'll go to the management console for iam here you have an option for create role isn't it so just click on this here you have like four options so aws service, either you can create it for aws service or another aws account or a web identity or saml federation so this is basically for your authentication, single sign on authentication. But here we have two options. Now the common use case that you can see here is EC2. So if suppose I want to allow any service to be accessed from the EC2 instance, I have to create a role for the EC2 instances. So if you click on this one and click on next, so you can see here all the existing policies. It'll take some time to load. So you can just type S3 here. And you can see here, a lot of s3 policies already there so we have s3 access policy isn't it so if you can just expand this you will be able to see the json format so what it is saying is you have action of s3 star and you have access to all the resources so what happens here is you can do a list object get object put object delete object anything if you have all the permissions if you select this and you click on next you can add the name of the tag that you want and you can just review this you can add the role name so i have already created a amazon s3 full access so i won't create it but you can do it by adding a name here and once you create the role you will be able to see it when you refresh this you will be able to see that in the list of roles that you have it's very simple so once you have this once you've created that you can just come here and you can just select the role that you have just recently created and just save this so now you can just see if you see here we have attached the im rule that is full s3 access so don't worry about this so now once we go back to the console again or the terminal again and we can just do a aws s3 ls we'll be able to see the list of buckets that we have so this path is clear for us because this is a public instance and i am able to access it through the internet gateway and with that i am able to access the s3 buckets so not a problem I'm able to do this. The next thing that I want to do is I want to have my private instance also being able to connect to the S3 buckets using the VPC endpoint. So we'll do that. First of all, let us just connect to the private instance and see that it is not working. So that's one important thing that we need to do. So if you go to the private instance and just let us copy this private instance and uh, IP address and just let us connect to this. So I have already copied my EC2 key here in my home directory so if you so if you see this ec2 key hyphen pen so i can just connect the same using the same ec2 key i have already shown this how to do it in my previous episode so i think by now you all are pretty much aware of how to do this so not a problem 
So now you are able to connect to the private instance and the same way the way we did it for AWS S3 LS to list down the objects or the buckets, we'll do that. Okay, so we can configure the same for the private instance and I can just go to security and modify the IAM role, select the full S3 access and save it. And just we'll do this once again. But this won't work because it's a private instance and we cannot access AWS S3 from here. It'll basically time out. So don't worry about that. But if you want to see what is going on in the background, what you can do is you can just do a control Z and you can just type debug. And you can just execute the same. And you can see here it is just stuck at this position. So not a problem. We are not able to connect to this. And that is what the problem is that we are trying to solve here. So the next thing that we wanted to do was we have to create the VPC endpoint. So to create the VPC endpoint, what we need to do, we need to go to your VPC console. Here, you can see the option of endpoints. Okay. So this is the place where you can create your VPC endpoints. So there are no VPC endpoints created as of now. So you can just click on create endpoint. And here you can see a VPC endpoint allows you to securely connect your VPC to another service. An interface endpoint is powered by private link and uses an elastic network interface as an entry point for a traffic designated or destined to a service. So that we have already discussed, so not a problem. And a gateway endpoint serves as a target for a route in your route table for traffic destined for a service. So this is also already discussed, so not a problem. The service category that you see here, there are three ways you can actually create the endpoint. So one is for the AWS services, or you can just find it by the name that you want to have or you've given already or you can just go to the marketplace. But for now, what we are doing is we are going to just create an interface for the S3. So you can just type S3. So if you see here, we have the type AWS S3 as gateways. I'll just close this and I'll show you. If you see most of the services that you see here have interface, but only DynamoDB, I think, and uh, yeah, and S3 will have gateways. Wait, I'll just type. So DynamoDB is gateway, S3 is gateway. So if suppose I want to connect to S3, I want to create a VPC endpoint for S3, then I need to obviously go for the gateway type, isn't it? Let's type S3 and select this. And what is the VPC ID we have? My VPC demo. And here you want to associate it with, you have to associate it with your private subnet, isn't it? You will get a PL or the prefix list. I already told you that you will get a prefix list ID. So now what it is saying is it will automatically add a route where the destination is the prefix list 78A54001. This is the prefix list ID for Amazon S3 to the target and it will assign it as a target for the endpoint ID that we have for the VPC endpoint and it will add to the route table. So you don't need to worry about this. And warning, it has already shown you the warning when you use the endpoint, the source IP address from your instance is your affected subnets for accessing the AWS service in the same region with the private IP address, not the public IP address. Yes, we already know this because we know that when you create the endpoint, we want to have a secure connection on the private connection. Here you can have either a full access or a custom access. You can just click on custom and write the policy. You can also click on policy creation tool to generate a policy for yourself and paste it here. So here we'll be giving the full access. So don't worry about that. Just you need to come down and add a tag. Okay, so I have given this and I don't think so there is anything left for us to do. Just create the endpoint. Yeah, so we have successfully created the VPC endpoint. Now just close it. As you can see, this is the main route table for the my VPC demo and here it has been added like PL78A54001 and this is a VPC ID that we have already created, just now created. So if you come back here, you can see ADBE8 and this is also ADBE8. So now what happened is we have created VPC ID or the VPC endpoint and this endpoint has a service association with your Amazon S3. So this has a policy which allows you to connect to the S3 and it allows you to access AWS S3 and perform the operations that you want.
So now that we have added everything and the route table and everything, then what we need to do is we need to just type AWS S3 LS. And as I had already told you that this may not work because the region that is specified by default is US East 1. So if you want to access it, you need to just specify region and the region that you have the content. So I have it in AP South 1. So you can just write this and just click on enter or hit enter. So now that you have access to Amazon S3 from your private instances using the VPC endpoint, you are able to access the buckets that you have and you are able to list them out as well. So let's go back to the diagram once again and we'll see that whether we have been able to achieve what we wanted. So if you see here, we have created the VPC endpoint and the route table that we had, we have added the prefix list ID for the Amazon S3, which has the target to the VPC ID. So anything that wants to try to access to the Amazon S3 CIDR block will have to go through the VPC ID. So this we have already done and that is why our instance at the private subnet is able to access the S3 buckets.